beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed my assignment tonight is to provoke you to let you know that that victorious life in Christ is your destiny but like the human body ladies and gentlemen there is a call to explore the other dimensions that have not yet been added to produce wholesome victory otherwise we are going to be quoting scripture thanks be to God who causes us to triumph and we will watch our loved ones sadly continue to die in ill health because we are not willing to explore the vast riches. What are the keys that control the healing anointing? What are the keys that control prosperity and wealth? What are the keys that control influence? What are the keys that control longevity? What are the keys that control excellence? What are the keys? We need to find these keys. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I submit to you, there is no single man that has all the keys by himself. God himself will not even allow that. You can have all the keys work in your life and that by gleaning to the body, the larger body, through humility to receive other keys that may not be in your personal experience with God. Are we together? Open your Bible and read and you will find what is written there. And you will see what is happening in your life versus what the Bible says should happen. It says your children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Yet you love the Lord with all your heart and you have trained five children. Not one of them is walking. Not one of them is risen. All born again, spirit filled. And every morning you hear the sound of those children. They wake you up with their prayers. You, they, you sleep while they are praying. And yet you are saying, what kind of a God is this? That after five years, he cannot give, even if it's one of my child a job. I am telling you, the problem is not God. There is something about the system he designed that we do not understand. Are we together? Yes. I'm born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, but people don't like coming around me. I don't even have friends. What kind of thing is this? It must be demonic. Okay, we agree that there are spirits there. Okay, you come for miracle service and these spirits are casted. Yet, after five months, you still don't have any friend. What is wrong? Another spirit. You may be having a journey forever that will cause you pain. The real key is to now go back. Now that that deliverance has happened, what are the laws that govern relationships? he that wants friends must show himself friendly you learn people's skills you learn the law of honor you see when you learn these other dimensions you find out in one week you can have great friends and that includes your destiny helpers coming along are we together i'm a man of god but why is it that i'm not succeeding in ministry 
I will tell you, among many other reasons, it can be that you are not providing the kind of results, the kind of value, even though spiritual, that is needed and useful. Can people come to you? Can they come and learn God from you and be sure they will not be disappointed? Can they come and you pray for them and they are sure that they will return with testimonies? Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something. Psychologists teach us that one of the indices, the major index that measures our concept of happiness is progress. I hope you know that. That the degree to which you perceive you are making progress, it would translate to joy in your heart. And I can tell you it is true. Even as a man of God, it is true. I'll be wicked to just downplay. I come here every week. I'm happy. There are so many people inside, outside, everybody. I am happy God sent me, but I am happy you are coming because it is proof that the value is changing you. It is proof that something is changing in your life. Are we together now? If I can be happy as a man of God that I'm making progress, why will not I not want the people that God brings around me to also make progress? They may not be preachers, but what is wrong in you having your own house? After 20 years, what is wrong in you at least having a car? It's not all about cars, but must you trek for the rest of your life? Is that the will of God? Say no. no. I can't be the will of God. And you know, sometimes we downplay these things and say it does not matter. And a gentleman was trekking since he was in, in college. And now after 30 years, he's holding four children and his wife. He's still trekking, praying in tongues for 20 years, quoting scripture for 20 years. Something is not working. It's not just about money. I'm just using this to show you that when a system is faulty in your life, there is the, the deficiency becomes clear and your children can come and inherit that deficiency. I vowed and I told myself that everything I had to suffer in my life, anybody that comes from me, physical, spiritual children will never go through that again. This is why you see me laboring to tell you this. It is from a heart of love. As for me, I believe the things I'm teaching and I'm honored. I thank God that I have my results to show. So if I do not love you, I will not care. I'll just say, let's come and pray and go. If you are fortunate to have a testimony, may God bless you. No, not here. Not here. I will insist in love. If it's to cry, we will cry together. If it's to pray, we'll pray together. If it's to be diligent, we'll be diligent together until your life becomes a praise to the nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many people who have downplayed prayer. They are hard working, but they do not pray because they do not know that in the place of fellowship, there is an advantage that comes upon your life. And so when you talk about prayer, they say, don't mind all these poor people. They are just praying because they are poor and broke. No, you may be making a mistake. And so most of them say the only demon is, you know, and they make all kinds of statements that should not be. Eventually, the person becomes a billionaire and one strike from hell and all that money vanishes. Back to my example on the human body. I mentioned nine systems that I want you to pay attention to because I truly believe, and you are to, if you are to be honest with yourself, it's possible that one or more systems may be found wanting even if it has not gone to a point it has not packed up maybe it's declining you know how doctors can warn people and say look i checked your sugar level it's not yet so bad but be careful because you are you are having is going down or you, you understand that that's what god is doing to some of us the trouble has not yet manifested but it's on its way if you do not change so <laughs> Write this down. The believer's victory, please write this down. The believer's victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom. The believer's victory 
will only be made manifest. Please underline the word manifest. The believer's victory will only be made manifest by understanding and engaging the various systems of the kingdom. What are the systems of the kingdom? Like the various parts of the human body, there is the prayer system. There is the speaking of the word, you know. There's the place for mental transformation. There's the place for character and moral excellence. There's the place for diligence. I like to use the word diligence instead of hard work. There's the place for relationships. There's the place for the anointing. There is the place for patience. There's the place for mentorship. These are the various systems that are responsible. Maybe I should run through a few of them again. There's the prayer system designed to help men make contact with God. I have taught you, listen to my teachings on prayer, the assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. How about the place of the word? Confessing the word, studying the word, make reference to my teaching, equipping the saints. I preach it in Zaria. It's on our global page. Mental transformation. There are many believers who do not subscribe for mental transformation. They love God, they pray, they fast, but their understanding is so barren and unfruitful. It cannot purchase anything notable because of a level of mental bankruptcy. And I'm not just talking from an academic standpoint. Enlightenment, understanding how life works. The Bible says to be wise as a serpent and to be gentle as doves. It said, I send you as sheep among wolves. So be wise as a serpent. Why would God recommend a serpent when it has to do with having the wisdom of living in the cosmos? Mental transformation. Then there is a place of character. Then there is a place of diligence. There are people who pray and fast and study scripture, rightly so, but they never study the materials that lead to their excelling in their field of endeavor. The Bible gives you a holistic viewpoint of life, but as far as becoming excellent and gaining mastery is concerned, you have to be able to lay hold the area where God has called you into. If you're a career person, you must be excellent. You are a medical person, be excellent. Listen, there are two people who the Bible commended their prayer lives in the Bible. I, I don't want to take the time to teach on that, but just to teach you a very powerful lesson. One of them is Elijah. Elijah was even referred to in the book of James as a template to help us pray. But another person was Daniel. The difference between the two is Daniel did not just pray alone. Daniel was commended not just for his prayer life. Daniel was commended for the spirit of excellence and intelligence. And notice that of two of them, when we remember the one who had a systemic impact, we remember Daniel. They both prayed, but in addition, Daniel was intelligent. He was flawless. At least we know Elijah was an angry man. Because there are certain things about administration and leadership. If he learned, he would have added to his prayer life and made him a better presentation of God's ambassador. And this was what Daniel, I, Daniel, understood by books. You never see I, Elijah, in addition to this. He called down fire. Yes, I agree. He judged the prophets of Baal, but he ran away. He ran away. From, you remember when he ran away? You never see Daniel running away because he was preserved by wisdom. Even in a strange and a foreign land, there were other things he had that stabilized him. His prayer was exceptional. He dealt with the spirits of the Medes and the Persians. But my goodness, they sought for an occasion to mock God and they did not find any. He was flawless. Unbelievers testified that he had the spirit of the gods there. Can they say that about you in office? Or the only thing they'll say is that you pray and you fast. You are the, you are the poorest in terms of your job. You are, you, and you are saying, apostle, you have to pray for me. I want to become the CEO. I love you, but I love the company too. Should it go down just because? Do you get what I'm teaching you now? Listen, I thank God. I study and I pray. But let me tell you sincerely, and I will not lie to you, that there, there is a dimension of understanding that only books will give you. 
you have to buy the truth and sit down most people want a global ministry they want a global life and all they have been taught that is responsible for global influence is impartation you see that impartation is a system in the kingdom but the value of impartation is that it comes upon a mind that has been transformed transformed through knowledge transformed through discipline What is the call today? God is calling us, calling us to a life of excellence, calling us to a life of victory. God is calling us to rewrite the mistakes of those who have gone before us and that if we keep following that template alone without finding what else went wrong, to have produced the lopsidedness that we see in those who have gone before us, we will reproduce the same results, including the same limitations. Let me give you a final charge. Write this down. I truly believe that in the days that come, the days that are before us, the Lord will have believers to focus on three areas. Many areas, but three areas. And this came by the Spirit for me and I said I'm, I'll use this to wrap up my session so that we'll pray. There are three major areas that believers must focus on and contend for victory in experience. Number one, your spiritual health. Please write it down. Number one, your spiritual health. That means this should be the areas of focus, especially within the season that we're in now. Your spiritual health. That includes your relationship with God. Matthew 22, please give us from verse 37. We're reading down to 40 your spiritual health jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind next verse this is the first and greatest commandment 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself it says on these two commandments hang the law and the prophet that means the purpose for all the law and the commandments that were given was a way of forcing you to achieve these two things to love the lord with all your heart and then to love your neighbor as yourself are we together now very important your spiritual health Romans chapter 8 from verse 35 Paul gives us a very intelligent rendition there he said who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness peril or the sword next verse we are reading to 38 as it is written for thy sake we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter 37 it says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and then it says for i am persuaded may this be your persuasion tonight that neither death nor life read with me nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come uh-huh shall be able nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in jesus christ our lord your spiritual health that you must love the lord above and beyond anything above and beyond anyone it's been my emphasis our precious people sang it here that we must love him we must seek him loving the lord means that your prayer life must be up and alive loving the lord means that your fasting life must be up and alive loving the lord means that your word study life must be up and alive your passion for the house of god your passion for the things of god must be up and alive number two what is the second area god will want us to focus on in this season write this down your personal needs hmm. your personal needs and ladies and gentlemen please hear me do not downplay this take it as a prophetic instruction god wants you to begin to focus on your personal needs and get some results in place so that it can give you room to serve a bigger purpose are we together now yes your personal needs food shelter and all the personal things that you need to put in place if you don't think about it you don't plan it you don't take advantage of the grace of god to put things in place it will never happen 
hallelujah your personal needs that you make up your mind and say by the grace of God I should get to a point where this issue of thinking where will I get money to buy food solve it solve it so that you can have the time to do nobler kingdom things when your personal needs are not sorted I promise you I wrote something down here I said your personal needs being met is the cure to depression and frustrations when your personal needs are met I can preach here and I can shout because I have Jesus in my heart but I also have food in my house are we together now yes sir I have food in my house so it has energized me to shout the word to your spirit because when I am done I can go back Jesus your Jesus who preached that crusades the Bible clearly told us that there were times he was hungry and there were provisions in place am I right on that listen to me please I want you to take your personal needs seriously not just carnal needs but that which is required to give you the stability to serve God like your children's school fees write it down and start doing something about it like the issue of a house write it down whether to rent or to build in any way take action I have a responsibility over you I will teach you the truth it may not make sense now but you will look back and say thank you apostle for challenging me to take a step there are people who come and dedicate your houses before the end of this year in the name of Jesus Christ see every time God gives instructions like this is because behind that instruction is a grace to make it happen You know what will happen to you by the time you sort the issue of rent out of your life? And God helps you to put systems in place. Now you can send your children to good schools. Now you have the authorization to lock yourself for three days and you will not feel irresponsible. Now your prayer life will become richer. You can pray for three days, but not when your children are out of school and they are writing PTA letters and your relatives are calling you all kinds of names. Then you say you are in the retreat for three days. No. Please take your personal needs serious. There are things that if they are not in place, if you're a man of God here, thank God for ministry and thank God for everything, but please by all means, obtain grace to pay attention Oh, apostle I think I need a car now to help me to be efficient in ministry do not think you are carnal for thinking that if there is a legitimate need write it down and obtain the grace and the wisdom to do something about it are we together our children are going to college now their school fees will be ABC let's sit down and think about it through desire a man Proverbs 18 1 having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. Your personal needs. This is the season where God is ready to come through for you. You have prayed for others. You have interceded for others. Some of you, you are the ones that God has raised in your family and everything that comes to your life is distributed. But in this season, God wants to sort your personal life. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Can I tell you the truth? By the time you make progress and you move forward, God gives you a job. Some of these material blessings that come to help support your efficiency come. A car, a house, good children, a good spouse. You are very happy. You are doing well. Who told you your spiritual life will not be efficient? You know I'm not lying. Was that not what kept you awake in the night? And yet you were not praying. You were not praying and you were not sleeping. As for me, there are certain things I wave them goodbye. And the Spirit of God held their hands and forced them to wave me back. Are we together now? Yes. Please stay and sort certain things in your life. As a result of this teaching, don't just say this is a powerful revelation. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go back home and sit down. Pray in tongues for 10 minutes to avoid distraction. Then settle down. What is the meaning of this thing I've heard now? 
I have noticed I don't even have clothes to wear. So when my destiny helpers call me, well, how will I go to them? Don't say it does not matter. And I'm not talking of living a fake life. Don't go and borrow money and start doing some of these things. Rather, receive favor when I'm praying for it. Are we together? But you need to go down. I found out I just have one, one nice cloth. This is embarrassing. And it's not lack of money. It's lack of thinking and lack of planning. Go and look for a good tailor. Five, six nice clothes. Lord, thank you for your glory. And then the invitations can start coming for you. Because you are not even prepared for it. My CV. I know I've been applying and I'm tired, but let me take a step of faith. Let me start studying on relationships because I sense that soon God will bring a destiny helper to my life and let me learn how to talk to great people so that I don't close a door by myself. You don't have a job but use the time to learn on relationships. Oh, this is the protocol of greatness. This is how to talk to them. Every man's need is his point of contact. You are now learning. Then God will send somebody and with courtesy and discipline in the midst of this bedeviled generation, you greet somebody with manners and courtesy. The person looks and says, what kind of lady are you? Where are you coming from? Oh, you look like a face I've seen somewhere. That's the Holy Ghost playing his own part now. Do you have a job? No. Can you do the job of a secretary excellently? Yes. Can you manage 650000 for a start? watch this and by the time you come and testify ignorant people will say is it just that but they don't know when you were studying people's skills when you were crying for favor you were engaging the various systems i hope someone is learning don't say i don't have a job and you fold your arms grumbling and gossiping and getting angry that does not produce the results do what you can do now pray get materials buy the truth in the name of Jesus, he's called me to be a kingdom financier. I may not have anything now, but in the name of Jesus, let me give myself to learning. Let me give myself to diligence. When others are sleeping, you wake up. God has told you he's giving you a global ministry. Nobody knows you for now. Stop moving around with cards and saying, invite me. That's not how it works. Neither do men light a lamp. Get that fire on the lamp. Get that fire on the lamp. Be like John Wesley. He says, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you born. Clamoring for invitations is not how it works. Going on social media and asking the world to follow you is not how it works. People follow results, not people. Now, thanks be to God. Minimize movies, minimize social media exposures. They are wonderful, but minimize it. Come into a realm of discipline where you say from seven to nine, I'm responding to emails and once it is nine, shut that email down. Not because you, can, you, are, you are training yourself. Your mind and your spirit is learning. Everything God gave man, he gave man authority over. The moment you do not have authority over elemental forces, how can you be trusted with the destinies of nations? Man of God, continue your prayer. It's a system that works. Continue the fasting. It's a system that works. Continue the night vigil. No invitations yet, but you just continue. Continue your watch study. Get books on church administration and be learning. Get books, the stories of the pain of people who made mistakes in ministry and some of them were open enough to show their scars. Don't make the same mistake. Use the opportunity to study. Ah, these are the pitfalls. When I get here, I will jump. Thank this man for showing me his scars. How does financing ministry work? Apostle, my own is that I must marry. I agree. Have you learned how to be a responsible father? Or are you just looking for a wife? Are we together now? What if your wife gives birth to twins in nine months? Are you ready for that? This is how to prepare for the blessing. You know, in church, I, I, I hope you are seeing my, my, my passion. I'm not just shouting for nothing. Most people in church are not prepared for what they are praying for. Lord, give me a, a wife. You've not managed yourself. You've not managed your home. You still call people and disturb them from morning till night. Bros, can you give me this? Can you? you are not ready for a family yet. It's as simple and as honest as that. The day you put your life in order, dress everything that is scattered in your room. 
arrange your room as a proof that you are ready to train children. At that point, God will now honor you. You see how it works. We must restore responsible Christianity. The kind that makes believers become a praise. Until now, our lives become a mockery to the world. And we are just shouting amen. And that is wonderful. But ladies and gentlemen, I repeat to you that there is a world that if we do not stay with God, in the next five, ten years, Christians will not be able to relate with the world that is evolving. I assure you, financially, sociologically, we will be at a loss. The only thing that will change is not IT and technology. The thinking is changing. Civilizations change, but most believers are not staying with the word of God to know what the next 10 years will be like. And you see, sometimes we preachers that do not insist for your transformation, for some reason, because we are still offering value, whatever happens, we can secure ourselves at least in our homes and whatever it is. Whether I preach or I mislead you, somebody will give me 10 naira, somebody will give me 20 naira, and I can feed myself. But what about you? That's why everybody is becoming a preacher because it looks like that's the only way to be blessed. Mm -mm. I made up my mind and I vowed as a covenant with God that I will never manipulate anybody to collect 10 naira, 20 naira. The blessing of the Lord upon my life does not come because I'm a preacher. It comes because I understand the economic system of the kingdom. And it is not a secret. It can be learned. Like somebody can subscribe to be a tailor. And after three, five months, when you understand the human body that I described, you now see the aspect of your life that is not working. All you need to know is to methodically follow a proven pathway. Unfortunately, our world is full of liars across boards. People who claiming to know things without results to show so the Bible says there are some them you must follow not every them but some them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise koinonia hear me it is my desire according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 I have taught you here that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant your spiritual vibrancy is my primary assignment and in life and in death I will give my all to it but in addition to your spiritual vibrancy there is a mandate upon my life to raise a people of influence at a global scale it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee Yes. Don't just jump and say Abraham's blessings are yours. Knowledge can turn you from your lowly estate to rise to become a point where you become an envy to the world. And from that elevated standpoint, look what Jesus did for instance in Manchester. Look the kind of glory it brought. I know that many people say a lot of things and I give him all the glory. But did you know what it means to part full that auditorium and feed over 2,000 people and not collect offering and not pay anything and not owe one pound? You know what it means to feed over 2,000 people and you are not a criminal? Until you have the result, keep quiet. Listen, we shouted these days from the days we were in one room. These are not things that just happen like this. It's not a mistake. It can be reproduced again. Don't think it's a mistake. No. He that strives for mastery is not crowned until he strives lawfully lawfully because God is giving a new facelift to his bride that we are presenting a portrait of a true apostolic and prophetic church that is not all about compromises it's not all about no there are people who can serve God with the dignity of kingdom integrity but the key like somebody who has gone to the gym the digestive system is working well by the grace of God, I tell you, until Jesus comes, there will never be a point in this service where you will come and will say, oh, we need to pay for this, this, maybe the bill for this. No, 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 no. We will give people an opportunity to sow. But by the grace of God, you can lay hold on eternal life. There are things when you find you have found, there is nothing the devil can do about it. 
So don't think that when preachers speak, they are just speaking nonsense. No, no. I will not come and burden you here. There are sincere preachers who love God, but the moment their bills come upon them, they start compromising. They are not evil people. They have just allowed certain systems to be wanting in their lives. The call for you now is don't wait till your children start asking you questions and say, Daddy, where were you when God was teaching other people? Where were you when God was showing them the keys of accessing power through prayer and fasting? Why are you a pastor of a powerless church? And then you get angry and call them rude. Ah. May those that come out of us not ask us questions we cannot answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm challenging you. So anything that is not working in your life now. Look at you. You are the fourth or fifth or sixth born. Yet out of 12 people, you are the only person who has risen. Look at the pain it is causing for you. You are earning over one million, yet you cannot do anything. Because someone will have to call you. Do you think it is the will of God for you to be in that state? What if there is something you can know? Oh dear. What if there is something you can know? What if between where you are and where you need to go, there is something you need to know about value, about relationships, about influence? Daddy, do you want to pass on to glory and leave your children to become beggars? Do you want to go to your grave knowing that you did not live an excellent life? You see, the thing about the kingdom is that from any level you can start. Please listen to me. This is not just a preacher talking. This is from my heart. You came to church. You are watching your children grow, celebrating their birthdays every month, but there is no corresponding growth. Don't say it does not matter. A day will come you will watch your children if you don't work on them become armed robbers and prostitutes because they have to make ends meet God wants you to sort the issue of your needs now if you need to seek counsel seek counsel you need to look for mentorship look for mentorship you need to go for advanced training go for advanced training you need to listen to messages do remember your children while you are doing it don't go to bed knowing that people will stand up and ask questions it is selfish to make decisions that do not have posterity in view Yet the church is full of people like this. We shout amen, we say amen, and we are programming a generation that will be on outright rebellion. By the time a child gets up and meets an irresponsible father, respectfully speaking, an irresponsible mother, they do not even know how his school fees was paid. I say this to you sincerely from my heart. There are people whose fees have been paying for years and decades. I have never seen their parents. They have not even come to find out who pays their school fees, who says to say thank you. That is the kind of, and many people are in church. I do this because I love Jesus and I do it with all my heart. But imagine if these ones were left and their lives and you go and find out that your daughter has become something else and you say you are an embarrassment to the family. No. All we say is demons. Yes, it may be coming from your father's house, but they took advantage of the deficiency of systems working to activate their operation. Are we together? When it's time to pray tonight, we'll pray because someone needs to cry. While you are seated, I just want you to see the picture of your children and see all of them rejoicing and say, thank you, daddy. Thank you for listening to Apostle. Thank you. It looked like it was going to be too late, but thank you for making this decision. I'm not talking about hustling. You've tried to hustle. It did not work. This thing is not about this issue of fire by... <laughs> The system of the kingdom is so methodical and precise. When you are properly mentored, you will marvel and wonder at the exactitude that comes with the kingdom system. It's not about trial and error. If it is not there, you do not understand it. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to 
finish what I must give you. I just gave you two. Number one, your spiritual health. I said these three areas the Lord put in my heart that this should be the area of focus in this season. That means you should stay in this area still. Results and victory is producing experience. Number one, again, your spiritual health. Number two, your personal needs. It's time for some things to work in your life. It's time to have personal results. It's time for certain things, sort some things once and for all so that you can make constructive kingdom progress. And then number three, the third area that you should focus on is becoming an effective witness. Becoming an effective witness. You have been taught and you know by now that for the believer, your life is not your own. That there is a bigger purpose beyond your personal needs. A bigger purpose beyond just your family, your children, your career. Your purpose must be connected to kingdom come. To have eternal value. Hallelujah. The reason why God is helping us and causing us to know him. The reason why God is opening us to the wisdom systems. And the dominion systems that make for an excelling life. Is so that we can have the liberty and the access to now serve his purposes. To serve his purposes with our lives. Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 34. 3 and 34. Am I right on that? Please look for it for me. My meat is to do and to the will of him that has sent me and to finish it. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. My will is to do my meat is to do John 4, my apologies, 34. My meat, my satisfaction, my nourishment, that which energizes me is to do the will of him. Not just to get a job, not just to get a pay raise. These things are within the circumference of your personal needs. Do you know that there is a realm where God can sort your life? And you can focus when you wake up in the morning. It's not about children's school fees again. It's not about a house or house rent or a car or whatever it is. When you get up in the morning, it's Father, what are we doing for the kingdom today? And it tells you there is a crusade happening somewhere. The budget is a hundred million. And you say, Lord, can, I, can you give me the privilege of writing it off? And you call and say, let it be done. Pray about something else, not the finances. This is your life participating in kingdom come. Or you build a house and you say, any missionary that comes here, let this be the place where they will rest ah, it is such a beautiful way when you know your life is counting as far as the kingdom is concerned there are many of you here in one of these days God will so empower you you will just get up and go to an orphanage and and say for the next one year for the next one year you will give them materials, you will give them Bibles, you will give them food that can take them for one year and tell them, I came as a representative of Jesus. I came to show you the love of Jesus. I was an orphan myself and now I know your pain, but I brought you the gospel. The, a gospel that has been carried on a bag of rice. The gospel that has been carried on a bag of spaghetti. The gospel that has been carried on a year's worth. They will listen to it. Hallelujah. Or some of you will see some man of God who is laboring sincerely, maybe in the village or where you come from, and he's not had the privilege to know what you are knowing. And because God has blessed you, you have activated all the systems in the kingdom that make for holistic dominion and victory. Now you can get a car and call him and say, Sir, I know that you may not know all it takes, but it is an honor for me and my wife and my children that we are contributors to your loving Jesus, to your remaining intact and serving him in truth. And the man with the tears in his eyes will kneel down and bless you to your children's children 
But everything I'm saying will remain a story and a parable until the systems of the kingdom are activated. And ladies and gentlemen, my assignment as always, and especially this year, this year of open doors, is to show you system after system. Like you train a medical student in school, they have all kinds of courses, anatomy, physiology, community medicine, all of those studies together. That's all it takes to be a doctor, but they have to go through it. Some of the classes are boring. Some of the classes are exciting. They will stand before a cadaver and have to work or need to learn surgical procedures. But that is what it takes. Are you willing to endure the training that makes for a champion? This is the last question God is asking you tonight. Apostle, can you summarize this? Sorry, it does not work like that in the kingdom. Imagine a doctor who tells his professor, I'm year one. Can you summarize everything? I already know chemistry. Just show me where to put the injection. Show me how to cut people open. And in two months, I'm that brilliant, I can finish. No. See how long it takes a medical student to become a doctor. Six years minus any other thing. And that is just the entry level. You know how long it would take that person to become a consultant? But after they endure, with, with precision. Look, how many of you have watched masters in fields, whether a senior advocate, whether a consultant, the, the, the intelligence and the confidence that comes because you, the systems of God can be understood. They are finite. Learn the laws of prosperity. Don't just run around saying, I want to do business, put my money here. No, 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 no. That's not what you need first. You need illumination from heaven to know how the system works. What is God's relational system? How does God connect people to destiny help us? What is the system that guarantees the anointing? How can I import the anointing as a product that when I'm traveling, I know it is traveling with me. When I'm on stage, I know it is with me. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. What are the systems of favor in this wicked world? Can I lay hold of it? This is my assignment to teach you and that I will do with all my heart even as I remain a student myself in the school of the spirit. But my call for you ladies and gentlemen is that you must assume the position of a student, not a member. A student, a student, a student, a student. Whilst you are sitting down, your children, both physical and in the, in the realm of the spirit, are saying thank you. Thank you for your endurance. Some of you, out of these teachings, you will have your own churches. You will have your own congregations. It will be, it will be a bad thing to know that you came out of here and you become a disaster somewhere because of inaccuracies, imbalance. No. Some of you may need to shut down on many things and just sit down and learn and learn. Let those run in run. They will run and still come back. You stay. But when you do learn, you will run with the speed of Elijah. And that in one year, you will do things that your life will become an unending wonder. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with. Let me walk When we ask you to invite people to church, this is not for fame or increased membership. Some of you, as you are seated here, there are people you are wishing were hearing what you are hearing because you are saying, this is the answer. This is it. No wonder the psalmist will say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Whether it's a miracle service or any other service that you know in your spirit that it will be impossible for me to come and share the grace and go back. That I will come and live wiser. I will come and live stronger. I will be provoked unto godliness. Laying hold of eternal life that your life will become a description of excellence. It says, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. We are going to pray. If you can pair yourselves into two or pair yourselves into three, we are going to pray. 
the next five minutes is a serious time of prayer please no carelessness focus on Jesus minimize moving up and down and let's pray because I want to speak and release some graces upon your life I like you to pray whether you are seated whether you are standing whether you are lying on the floor I just want you to take some time and pray in the spirit in one minute go ahead and pray Shades Kabalakata Paranda Gelekosiata Rada Badaga de Belekatos. Those who are watching online, make sure you are connecting. If you are alone, pray. Jesus is there. This is a destiny defining moment. Kate Prakata Belekata Praska Baratos. E Prakata Bareska Pelando Shalabaratosiata. Shataska Tefreska de Berenta Gebras. Ombra kata bara kata fras kata belaketes kebrende kata belaketos lika para sabaranda bara kata lekaso zediata kraba daga da brete keberetu siates. Pray, it's a new season for you. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Someone pray. It does not matter that you are coming from that lonely estate. The hand of his majesty lifting you by his spirit, revealing you. You are an effulgence of the glory of the Lord. That through your life, people will learn God afresh. Through your life, they will see the excellency of the power and of the wisdom of the spirit. Hate pras kata beleke to sopra teke bas Ranta parasa pras kata res kata leko shadis Ekratike perena vegata soto proto segetesh In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus We are still praying Father what area of revelation in my life is deficient open my eyes to see it Go ahead and pray What area is it my finances is it that I do not understand the dynamics of excelling in my spiritual life? Is it that I do not understand the wisdom of living and exerting dominion over the cosmos? Open my eyes, O God, that I may behold wondrous things. Call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The principles that make for character the principles in the name of Jesus, the engracing that brings total freedom and liberty over curses, over yokes, over diabolic manifestations. Reveal, reveal by your spirit. Reveal by your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point you are going to pray before I speak over your life. You know the area of needs that you have. That you know when God steps in and it is sorted, it will truly give you the time to sort the king. Some of you maybe is housing. Some of you maybe is sorting out certain material things. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. It says, he that told you have not asked for anything. It says, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I want you to open your mouth and unashamedly ask God. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Lord, sort this area of my life that I will have the liberty to serve you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Your marriage, your finances, your children, your basic needs, your family, cry unto the God of heaven. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Shabras katabela katoska prande ke barusa siata ekra te katabela katoska tebela kosh rest round about in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. A businessman is praying in the name of Jesus. A career person is praying. Someone is need who is in need for employment of employment is praying. A man of God is praying. A prophet in the making, an apostle in the making. 
pray from the depth of your heart. Let the maker of men make your life, sort your life, bring you rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your needs are met, I assure you that you will have the time to serve His Majesty. A lifetime is too long to have your needs met. A lifetime was designed to serve the King, not serve things, not look for things. Looking for things for the rest of your life is an erroneous use of destiny. Hallelujah. What you are about to receive is the engracing that now makes the things that you have learned. It says, now that ye know these things, if all I do is to leave you at the point of just discussions and knowledge, then I did not do you much. For every time God speaks, there is an engracing. The assignment of that grace is to rest upon you and to cause the things that you have heard to give you the impetus, the propelling force to move in obedience and to partner with your obedience to make manifest the things that you have believed. That is the assignment of the anointing. The assignment of the grace of God that follows his word is to back to propel you number one to obey and then in obeying to partner with your obedience now to make manifest the things that you have believed you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh Listen, as I speak over you, I want you to shake away that lie that the devil has told you you will never rise. I want you to shake away that demonic belief. Just because you came from the village, shake away that demonic belief. Apostle, I've lived a wayward life, I've lived a scattered life. Do not worry. In his presence, there is room for restoration. But I want to pray for you. I want you to receive from the depth of your heart. I stretch my hands towards you and I decree and declare I call upon the God who helps men the one who helps men to rise the one who helps men to thrive in the name of Jesus Christ begin to command strange results from tonight begin to command strange results from tonight strange results from tonight extraordinary results from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your passion for the things of God, your passion for the things of the Spirit, fresh fire upon your altar, fresh fire upon your altar, fresh fire upon your altar. Now hear me, I want you to receive this prayer, I want to pray for you. There are many of you, I'm saying it prophetically, between now and December, you will stand here to dedicate your own home. I say it by the God who sent me in the name of Jesus Christ and for some of you as it is now you may not even have work to do but you see God is ever willing to make his power manifest I say it again by his favor may God start sorting your personal needs
Please hear me. For some of you, while I described the human body, I perhaps call systems that are physically failing in your own body. While it was an analogy to explain the kingdom systems for victory, for some of you, you were just wondering and saying, Apostle is just calling this thing. Anything that has entered your body and has vowed to cut short your life, I command it must jump out of your body now. It must jump out of your body now. It must jump out of your systems, out of your organs, now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to speak over your finances. If you don't need it, you can receive it for someone else. But I want to pray over your finances. There is an advantage we have in addition to our value, our wisdom, relationships. There is the grace of God that engenders favor. You find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. I like how the Bible puts it. It says, and God is able to make all grace, not some grace, all grace are bound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency. Sufficiency means the capacity to always rise to the occasion, never disappointing. In all things, it says, may abound to every good work. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, for someone here, regardless the financial mountains that stand before you, I call upon my God who is also your God. Let things begin to change supernaturally. Open financial doors. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I decree and declare, whatever makes resources to go out of your hands, whether it's the careless use of them or a demonic manipulation, whatever be the case, I decree and declare, the grace to retain resources, receive it now. Are you ready for favor? I will pray this one today. I will pray it at the miracle service next week. I will continue to pray it till you become a living expression of the favor of God. Let me pray it for you. What is in favor? Huh. Favor has the ability to accelerate your life and your destiny. Favor has the supernatural ability to bring to end seasons of hardship seasons of all kinds of things most people have not understood the also passing excellency of carrying the genuine grace for favor and i have told you the proof of favor is not money money is the least thing you can be given as a result of favor the proof of favor is when god connects you to the hearts of men that you call on one man and a nation is ready to respond to you and even to attend to your needs. I don't know who that person is, but I'm stretching my hands towards you. That grace, I lay my hands on my own head and I pray by the privilege of the election of grace, may that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Rest upon you. Rest upon you. This grace called favor, let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon you in the city, in the country. Let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. That you become a living evidence of what God can do with men. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by this impartation of favor, I call forth whoever has been mandated by God to participate in your rising. Whether you know them or not, I declare this week by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may they show up in your life. May they show up in your life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ hear me final prayer whatever has refused to move forward you have moved it by your energy you have moved it intellectually you have outsourced men to move it but it has refused to move I stand by the the, the advantage of the prophetic I move you forward I move you forward make constructive progress in the name of Jesus Christ for in Jesus name we pray you have believed it your eyes will see it your hands will handle it I say it again your eyes will see it and your hands will handle it in Jesus name we pray hallelujah let me make the altar call thank you very much I want to make the altar call right now there's no need cajoling you the foundation for all victories and dominion in the kingdom is Jesus for every time we gather there is always someone who needs to make it right with Jesus let's minimize distraction for the sake of those who the Lord is calling now you are in this place and whilst you heard me teach for various reasons the Lord began to speak to you for some to rededicate your life and make it right with Jesus for others to make that decision the first time whether you are inside or outside please let's minimize movement let's not make it a culture to just move out carelessly like that it's not a good practice I'll talk about that next week um, I know that there's a crowd of people but as much as possible it doesn't take more than two three minutes you are here you need to make it right with Jesus I want to give you an opportunity don't wait for someone to be the first just for one person who needs to run here I count one to five run to Jesus come and stand here come boldly come come God bless you koinonia let's celebrate them as they come come he will give you a new beginning he will rewrite your story come to Jesus keep clapping as they come thank you thank you for saying no to Satan thank you for saying no to failure thank you for saying no to yesterday and embracing a new life the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away if you're joining them please join quickly 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 come hallelujah let me tell you something my dear people standing in front here you may never understand the joy that is in the heart of the father even Jesus when we come to declare his lordship over our lives it is the noblest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom and I salute you for the boldness and the courage to make it right here in front if you're joining them please come I'm about to lead them to pray rush come join them very quickly hallelujah the Bible says that everyone who comes to him he will in no wise cast away thank you again for coming and those who are following across the globe here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life it's my joy and my honor to midwife that process as you encounter the living Christ himself lift your right hand make it high above your head as a sign of surrender and please say this after me let it be loud let it be clear say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never amen please keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought by your spirit even to yourself they have declared your lordship over their lives and I pray oh God thanking you for honoring their decisions I decree and declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your lives 
in the name of Jesus Christ. The life of God is at work in your spirit from this moment. And I declare unto you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go forward ever and backward never. And every accusation and every legal access Satan has over your life, by the blood it is broken, it comes to an end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations and God bless you. Now please, I want you to move to my right which will be your left there's a counselor who will have a quick word with you and then you return to your seat let's honor them as they make their way to meet the counselors is this the best you can do koinonia <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord now just two quick announcements and we're done thank you for your patience number one Next week, by the grace of God, will be a miracle service for the month of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Lord put an instruction in my heart. Please listen very carefully. Number one, you are going to write, you are coming with two sets of prayer requests. Number one is your regular prayer request. And God gave me an instruction. Write the names of every one of your family members. You are going to bring them. This is an instruction that God gave me. We are going to be praying. And the Lord revealed to me that in this season, he is not only going to be visiting individuals, but he will be performing spectacular miracles, reaching down to families and turning things around. You will see loved ones saved. You will see loved ones healed. You will see God open doors, not just for you, but for your loved ones. So please make sure you carry that word, your prayer request, and then the names of your loved ones whether nuclear or extended, write it, send it. For those who are online, you can do well to send yours. Our media team will be glad to get it across here and we're going to be praying. And then of course, invite everyone you know around the city, the nation and online. Let's connect and see what God is going to be doing. Have you been blessed tonight? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 